Um, what is the book I need to become a math YouTuber? Huh, this book? Cinnamon, wait! That's the book that will send you to another world. What? Oh, what? What is this? Megan, where are you? Yes, I'm right here. Thank goodness. You got dragged along too. So about this problem. There are numbers and shapes written here. The shape corresponding to one is a line. Technically, since the length is finite, it's called a line segment. The shape corresponding to two is a square. And the shape corresponding to three seems to be a cube. These numbers appear to represent dimensions. Dimensions? It seems so. But what does 1.585 mean? 1.585 dimensions? I've never heard of that. This is quite a tricky problem. What is the meaning of this question mark? To arrive at the answer, we first need to review the definition of dimension. Let's start with one dimension. This is a number line. The number line represents all real numbers. In other words, the position of a point on the number line can be represented by a single real number. Well, that's certainly true. Then what about the two-dimensional case? This is a two-dimensional plane. Um, the position of a point on the plane can be represented by a pair of real numbers. This is what's called coordinates. Well done. Similarly, in the three-dimensional case, the position of a point can be represented by a triple of real numbers. To summarize, in one dimension, a point is represented by a single real number. In two dimensions, a point is represented by a pair of real numbers. And in three dimensions, a point is represented by a triple of real numbers. Hmm, I see. So a dimension is the number of coordinates needed to specify a point. Ah, uh, wait. What does 1.585 dimensions mean? Does it mean the number of coordinates is 1.585? Thanks to you, Meta, and the mystery has only deepened. It's not my fault. This understanding of dimensions is not wrong as a first step, but let's review the problem again. If you look closely, this problem is a bit strange. This doesn't depict spaces, but rather shapes. Huh? You're right. Which means the numbers here don't represent spatial dimensions, but perhaps some property of the shapes. That's a great perspective. For example, let's consider a line segment of length 1. If we enlarge this by a factor of r, its length becomes r. Well, that's obvious. Next, let's consider a square with side length 1. If we enlarge this by a factor of r, the side length becomes r, and its area becomes r squared. That's true. This indicates that the square is a two-dimensional shape. Now if we enlarge a cube with side length 1 by a factor of r, since the side length becomes r, its volume becomes r cubed. This means that the cube is a three-dimensional shape. It seems like you're starting to get it. Now let's try to infer what a 1.585 dimensional shape could be. Let's assume there's a 1.585 dimensional shape. We don't know its exact shape so let's just represent it with a dashed circle for now. It has some kind of size, with a value of 1. What does size mean? Length or maybe area? No, it's neither of those. This is a 1.585 dimensional shape. Its size is a quantity that lies between one dimension and two dimensions. In other words, it can be thought of as a quantity between length and area. I can't really imagine that. And when this shape is enlarged by a factor of r, how large does the shape become? Um, so far the exponent of r has matched the dimension. So the size of this shape would be r to the power of 1.585? That sounds right. Hmm, I feel like the mystery is only deepening. If only we had a hint. Watch out, something's coming. What? Whoa, what on earth is this? It seems a hint has arrived. If you raise 2 to the power of 1.585, the result is approximately 3. Wow, is that so? I wonder what this can be used for. Think back to the earlier situation. When a 1.585 dimensional shape is enlarged by a factor of r, its size was thought to become r to the power of 1.585. Now when r is 2, if you enlarge this shape by a factor of 2, its size becomes 2 to the power of 1.585. In other words, it would be considered to triple in size. Exactly triple? Uh, I don't want to go too deep into that, but since we're using an approximate value to be more precise, if you enlarge a shape, by a factor of 2, and its size becomes 3 times larger, then it's reasonable to think the dimension of the shape is about 1.585. Hmm, I see. Then we just need to create such a shape. 
That said, it's still hard to imagine it. Let's try exploring it from a different perspective. Earlier we enlarged the line segment, but this time let's shrink it to one half its length. So that means reducing it by half, right? Yes. Now how do we restore the original line segment from here? Um, maybe we just need to combine two of the half line segments? That's exactly it. Next, let's consider the two-dimensional case. If we shrink a square to half its length, it would look like this. How can we restore the original square? Earlier, we combined two shorter line segments. But here it seems we need to combine four smaller squares. Exactly, so you need two squared smaller squares. Ah, that's true. So next, if we shrink a cube to half its length, we'll need eight smaller cubes to restore the original cube. It means we need two cubes smaller cubes. Here, the three in two cubed represents the dimension of the shape. So, if you shrink a certain shape to half its length, and if it takes 2 to the 1.585 smaller shakes to restore the original shape, in other words you need three smaller shakes. If such a thing exists it could be called a 1.585 dimensional shape. But does such a shape really exist? We're getting much closer to the answer. Really? Earlier when we shrank the square to half its length, we needed four smaller squares. Not three but four. It feels like we're close but not quite there. If a square requires four pieces to combine, then could it be that a triangle requires three pieces to combine? That's an interesting thought. Alright, let's give it a try. We prepare an equilateral triangle and shrink it to half its length. Then if we combine three, it looks like this. The center is left empty. It feels kind of close to the original shape, but we couldn't fully restore it. To restore it, we'd need one more smaller equilateral triangle. So you'd need four smaller triangles. Since equilateral triangles also have area, they are two-dimensional shapes. When shrunk to half, requiring four pieces to combine is similar to squares. Hmm, so it didn't work? I feel like we're getting closer to the answer. But still, we can't go any further. Let's force our way forward. What do you mean? Take this shape with the empty center and shrink it to half its length. Then combine three. It will look like this. The number of holes has increased. I'm giving up already. And now... Huh? You still going? Shrink this shape to half its length again. And combine three. The number of holes keeps increasing. The way. Could it be that the shape on the left is starting to resemble the shape on the right? Good observation. Then let's repeat this operation infinitely. You just casually said something incredible. What does it even mean to repeat it infinitely? Watch out, something's happening. What? What are you saying? Whoa, what's happening this time? This is... This here Pinsky triangle. Countless triangles are combined together. It's kind of chilling to look at. But it's a beautiful shape. This is exactly what we've been looking for. An example of a shape with approximately 1.585 dimensions. 1.585 dimensions. Hearing it again, it sounds so mysterious. Since this shape has a dimension greater than 1, the total length becomes infinite. What? A one-dimensional ruler is too fine to measure this shape. Conversely, since this shape has a dimension smaller than 2, its area becomes 0. A two-dimensional ruler is too coarse to measure this shape. It's such a tricky one. This shape can indeed be restored by shrinking it to half and combining three of them. It's not just similar. It completely returns to its original form. I never imagined such a shape would appear. Actually, there are many other examples of shapes like this. Huh? You knew that? For example, first draw a line segment. Divide this line segment into three equal parts and transform it like this. The central part becomes an equilateral triangle without the base. Next, apply the same transformation to the four line segments. If you repeat this process infinitely, you get a curve called the Koch curve. It's called a curve, but that doesn't mean it's smooth. It just means it's connected from one end to the other. So keep that in mind. It's really jagged. No matter how much you magnify the Koch curve, it always has detailed structure and its length is infinite. It's known to be a shape with approximately 1.262 dimensions. That's pretty mysterious too. Roughly speaking, shapes like the ones we discussed today 
which remain complex no matter how much you magnify them, are called fractals. Shapes like this example which are self-similar, meaning they are constructed by combining smaller versions of themselves, are important examples of fractals. But not all fractals are self-similar. Oh really? For instance the boundary of this shape is an example of a fractal known as a Julia set. Because of the special coloring, the boundary might be a bit hard to see, but don't worry about that for now. Here we're varying a certain constant, and the shape changes accordingly. Wow, this is amazing! This shape is not completely self-similar, but if you look closely, it repeats similar patterns. Infinitely complex shapes are kinda scary! Well, it's about time we return to our original world. Alright! Well then, take care everyone! See you again!